Hey you guys, it's Jessica. My username is Jessica Cakes. Today is October 31st, 2018. Um, happy Halloween. I am here today to do my week 11 post-op VSG update. And for some reason I just keep tripping over my words and I like don't even know what I'm saying right now. So forgive me, um, but I've already like restarted this video like 10 times. So this is just gonna be what it is. Um, anyway, um, with that being said, this week, um, this week's update is a little bit shorter than I would, not the update is shorter, but the week is shorter um, because uh, last week I weighed in a day late and this week I weighed in a day or two early. Um, I usually weigh myself on Thursdays or Fridays, um, but this week I decided to weigh myself today, which is Wednesday, um, because it's also the end of the month um, and at the end of every month I do uh, weights and measurements. Um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to do it today and I wanted to do a video in my little cat outfit. Um, so yeah, as far as stats go, uh, my high weight was 236 pounds. Um, the day of surgery, I was 213 pounds. Um, last week I was 101, 191.7 pounds. And then, um, today I weighed in at 189.7 pounds. So that's a two pound loss in less than a week. Um, which means since my surgery, I've lost 23.3 pounds. And since my, um, since my high weight, um, I've lost 46.3 pounds. So that means that in 11 weeks I lost, so in 11 weeks I lost 23 pounds and before my surgery when I was doing keto it took me about seven to eight months to lose 23 pounds. So that's like pretty crazy to me um, just how fast things can go. Um, especially in the very, very beginning. Um, this, so I guess I'll talk about like this month kind of as a whole. This month I was at the same weight for four weeks in a row. And just this past week, um, I lost about, I went down a little bit. Um, and then this past week I lost two pounds, which is like a really good, uh, loss for me. Um, so this month I lost, I only lost, um, let's see, like three pounds. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, um, or you haven't watched my videos or you forgot, um, I am pregnant. So, um, I try not to focus too much on, on the numbers, but it's always nice to see the, um, the scale go down, obviously. And it kind of puts my mind at ease, um, knowing that like this is still working, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, so this past month I only lost three pounds, but I did, so, I did all my measurements today um, and I did lose body fat. Um, I lost inches in every um, every measurement, except for my belly, obviously. Um, and what I found interesting is that I, um, I feel like I'm really showing pretty early with this pregnancy. Um, if you follow my Instagram, you kind of see, cause I, I post a lot of like pregnant photos. <laughs> so um, I'm showing pretty early and it said in the past month I only gained one inch around my belly and it feels like so much more. So that makes me think like I'm losing fat around my back um, and then my belly is just getting bigger. 
Um, and I also, around my natural waist, um, I, when I'm not pregnant, I have a very like hourglass figure. Um, so I measure around like the small part of my waist and that I feel like is obviously getting thicker because of the belly. Um, but I lost an inch around my waist. So I think a lot of, um, the fat that I'm losing is from like my back area because I used to have a lot of, um, like I used to hold a lot of fat there. Also, um, I do uh, pictures, like progress pictures every month as well. Um, and I, so when I started this journey, I felt like it was really important to take before pictures but I never took a picture of my back because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I know that's getting smaller, but I don't really have like something to look at um, as far as pictures go. I have pictures from the front and pictures from the side, but I don't have any pictures of my back. Um, but I do think that that's, I feel like I'm getting a lot um, thinner like around my sides and in my back. Um, and also I've been going to the gym a lot. Um, it's been a little tricky because we have a car situation still going on and um, it's been tricky for me to, to get there, but I've been really, really trying and doing the best that I can. And I think I'm, I'm proud of myself for trying to find a way every day to get there. Um, so yeah, I feel feel like I had so much to talk to you guys about and now I'm like blanking. Oh, I went to see a specialist um, because I, right now, I'm not considered a high risk pregnancy, but I have like the risk factors of becoming a high risk pregnancy. Um, one is the surgery. The surgery doesn't automatically make you a high risk patient, especially the VSG surgery because there's no um, malabsorption of anything. But um, since I had it, since I was actually pregnant before I even had the surgery, which we didn't know about, um, that makes things a little more complicated. Um, and then with my last pregnancy, I had gestational diabetes and I had very, very high blood pressure, not very high blood pressure, but I had continuous high blood pressure throughout my entire pregnancy last time. Um, so I just went to see a specialist this time to kind of get me on track as far as my health goes. So she helped me a ton with vitamins, when to take my vitamins, what I don't really need to take, what I do need to take, and she's not like completely well versed in um, in weight loss surgery, but I feel like she just knew everything. Like I could ask her any question in the world, <laughs> and she knew the answer to it. And she's like so awesome. So um, I did find out that I have like some genetic thing where I absorb iron, um, which can end up causing liver damage. So um, I absorb a ton of iron. So she said, don't take iron supplements. Whereas most pregnant women um, and most people who have had weight loss surgery should be taking iron. So that was really interesting. Um, and then um, she did say that I can continue to lose weight um, and that she supports it and she supports the diet. We went over macros exactly what I should be eating and how much um, and then she um, she did say that I that when I'm in my third trimester um, I really have to maintain I can't try to continue to lose um, during my third trimester but up until then I can keep keep doing what I'm doing um, so as far as macros go she asked me how many carbs I was eating and I said, well, it depends on if it's a day that I have a little cheat or not. <laughs> but on a typical day, I have anywhere from 
50 to 70 grams of carbs a day. Um, and she said that she wants me to get 90. So that's fine. Um, except the, that day, um, I came home and I was like, oh, I get to eat 90 grams of carbs. So I like was sitting there eating cookie butter out of the jar and my, my husband comes home and I was like, the doctor told me I needed to eat more carbs. And he's like, mm, I don't think that's what she meant, but whatever. And he's like, I'm not going to tell you what to do because I, you do what you want anyway. But so obviously I know that's not what I should be doing, but um, yeah, I'm aiming for 90 grams of carbs. I'm still aiming for at least 70 grams of protein and then the rest will be healthy fats. Um, the reason why she wants the carbs up is because um, it's shown that if you eat too little carbs, um, not necessarily for yourself, but for the baby, it can cause insulin resistance at a very young age. So I don't want that to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll have no problem doing that, but I do have to make sure I'm like watching what I'm doing. I can't be like, oh, I can eat this candy because I need to get my carbs up. I need to still watch, you know, the, the balance of everything. But as far as my diet goes and everything, she said the quality of food I'm eating is really good. Um, I try to eat like whole foods. I try to limit what comes in packages and um, and all of that stuff. So um, she was pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, so tonight we went to just a little get together. Um, at a friend's house and it was so fun it was like it was fun because it was like an adult party but kids were totally welcome there even though actually Helena was the only kid at the party um, but these people are like super low-key and like my parents were there and um, they just made us dinner and then um, and then we walked around and trick-or-treated and it was the cutest thing ever my daughter was a little white kitty cat. Oh my God, she was so cute. If you follow me on Insta, you should look at it because it's so dang cute. Um, and so last year we didn't go trick or treating. She was really little anyway. And then this year I was like, I don't even know, like, cause she doesn't eat candy or anything like that. But it, we like went to a few houses and like sent her up to the door and she held her little basket and oh it was so sweet and cute so i had a lot of fun and then i'm over here like in these leather pants and like big ass high heels and i'm like mama thinks she's going to the club or something because i could not walk we were like in kind of a rural area with like um, with like cobblestones and stuff, and I was like, "What am I doing? I'm a mom. I need like sensible shoes on." And it just was funny. I don't get to get dressed up a lot, so um, it kind of felt good to get all fun, <laughs> funned up. But I ended up borrowing a pair of shoes from my friend because I was like, "I want to go trick or treating." Anyway. Uh, that's that. I am still working on going to the gym. I, um, I got back into it after my vacation, no problem. And, um, I've been sore this week though. I've had like, um, delayed onset muscle soreness and in, especially in my legs and my butt. And so like getting up and down out of chairs, I'm like, Ugh. like, <laughs> like the sounds I make, people always look at me and they're like, are you okay? <laughs> but yeah, I like that feeling. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing something. So anyway, I hope everyone has a great day. I hope everyone had a fun Halloween and happy November. Um, I'll check in with you guys later. Bye.